Hello everybody, welcome back to Photo Australia, another episode. Now Grant, I've come across something here that I've got here, newspaper. Oh. <laughs> was, was that the one I left on, on, on your desk? That's the, yeah, yeah the, <laughs> the one that you just leave lying around. Hey, now I see some of your handiwork here, Grant. So I've got a bit of a question. So for those that don't know, Grant does um, quite a bit of shooting for the Argus now, which is a, a local uh, newspaper. And I've got a couple of questions for you. Give us a bit of a rundown of what you do, how you approach it. Because you do a lot of sports shots and event shots. What kind of gear you are using. Uh, maybe some of what are the settings you're sort of using for general shooting and that for the newspaper. And just a little bit of an insight of what goes on when you're photographing for a newspaper. Yeah, hi Brad. Uh, hi folks. Um, oh, I'm glad you finally took the hint. I've left that paper <laughs> lying there for about six months and you keep putting it in the bin. <laughs> so, um, yeah, gee, thanks, thanks for asking, Brad. Um, I started this a bit over a year and a half ago now, helping out. Um, at the Argus. and It's um, taken that long for me to ask you <laughs> right. now, Grant. How do you do this? Yeah, that's right. That's right. And, um, yeah, it's it's a weekend thing I do um, to, to help out and a, a lot of sport, but increasingly little bits of social functions, I think, in the, that edition you're looking at, um, uh, county fairs and whatever. Look, um, what do I use? Okay, this is what I use. Um, Pentax K3 Mark III. Um, shock horror. Um, it's an AP APS-C, 25.7 megapixels, 12 frames per second. Um, uh, it's a crop sensor, sensor if you don't know what APS-C means. Um, and it's a lovely, lovely little camera. And I'd like to dedicate this little video to a very dear friend who we've lost uh, very recently in Keith Groudon. Uh, may he rest in peace. Uh, Keith um, eventually succumbed to a very long battle with um, cancer and passed away a couple of nights ago. So uh, to the family, um, wife Margaret and brother Tony and children, our sincerest cond condolences because Keith was one of our biggest fans here. He was. He Photo was. Australia. So, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a sad day. But Keith mm. was also a Pentax shooter. And I don't think he'd ever got around to purchasing the, the K3 Mark III, which Margaret probably would have been putting the brakes on that. Um, and quite rightly, Margaret. Um, but Keith would have loved this camera. It's, um, it's a real, it is a pro-spec camera. It's got a lot of very, very good features about it. Um, this lens that I've got on here is the one I use a hell of a lot. It's the... Sigma 1750EXDC, um, which is their top quality. It's f2.8 at its, um, at, at its open end. It is incredibly sharp, and I think, as you can see from those um, uh, photos, Brad, in the paper, they reproduce really well. They do. Um, a lot of that I was using fill flash. I use a Godox um, flash unit for that, V860 Mark III. Um, and... For sport, I bolt on a Sigma 7200 f2.8. Now, you may ask, why am I using Sigma lenses and not Pentax lenses? Well, I've got a big kit bag full of Pentax lenses as well. Many of the really top-end primes, the 300, the 200, the 100, 43, etc., etc. But... These couple of Sigma lenses, particularly the 7200 f2.8, that's an EXDG if you understand their, their um, uh, branding, that's their top of the range, is an absolutely brilliant lens. And Saturday, I will be shooting with the 7200 on this body in the rain at the local football. Um, even though the 7200 is not weather sealed, I pretty casual with it. I hold it down when I'm not using it. If it's heavy, heavy rain, like getting seriously wet, I'll put a plastic cover over it. The body is weather sealed. So I don't get too uh, fussy about that. 
This poor thing already, I only purchased this um, six, eight months ago, and this has been set down in the mud, it's been in rain, it's been in dust. Um, yeah, it's had everything you can imagine done to it, and it's still going strong. 12 frames per second, you run up a lot of shots very quickly, Brad, at that. I, I think um, you can get a little bit carried away with um, really high shutter speed, especially with the mirrorless cameras. Um, you can go up to ridiculous speeds, but you also got to be mindful of that when you uh, spray and pray that um, <laughs> you are filling your card up and yep. um, you can get to downloading yeah. <laughs> and you have a hell of a lot of photos yep. that are virtually of all the same thing. Yep. <laughs> exactly. You might only need three or four frames yep. and you you could have 100 frames. So yep. Yep. Um, be mindful that... Um, yeah, high frame rate is great, but when you start going over, um, say, 10, 10 frames or anything like that, I mean, you start ending up with more and more of the same thing. Yep. I did a little bit of um, shooting with my K1 Mark II, the full frame Pentax, um, and that's only five frames per second, I think, and that was, it looks okay, but... A little slow and for sport, particularly for Australian rules football. For anyone from overseas watching this, that's the great game, by the way. Um, <laughs> and easy now, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> but the um, this thing is really good. The 12 frames per second allows me to capture um, lots of really good uh, sequence of events in, in a match like. Tackles, um, marks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you're right, Brad. Get home with you know 800 or 1,000 photos at the end of the day, and you've got to wade through them to um, to process and sort. It's a it's a major thing. So, how those people get on with their ones that are doing what 100? Did I hear someone's doing 100 frames per second on a yeah? On a, it's a, a look, mirrorless camera. It's, I don't it's, really see the the point of that. To be quite honest with you. But. Yeah, it's fine if you're doing something that you need a very short, quick burst of a split second action. Um, but yeah, just be a little bit mindful of. Um, I mean, I, I usually like when you go out on a nature trip and you hear sort of like the machine guns yeah. going off in the in the buses. I mean, be more yeah. selective of the yep. moment you yep. want to cat yep. capture. Exactly. Um, don't be the you know the person um, just there going you put, because yeah. yeah yeah put put some thought in into your shot correct um, correct wait I, for the moment I'm sure yeah. that you, when you're doing football and action shots Grant you've probably got your camera already probably focused waiting for the action to happen like if they're about to catch the ball yep. you're probably there ready to shoot and you'll probably shoot a couple of frames before. During and after, and then that's it. You're that's just right. capturing the moment that you're after instead of sort of just blasting people as they're sort of running sort of thing yep. and yep. not a lot of storytelling. Yeah. Yeah, I my process is with any of the assignments I'm given to go and cover is A, arrive um, a bit earlier than they ask me to generally, have a bit of a look around, um, shoot a couple of general banker shots which gives me a feel for the light and what's going on and shadows reflections all sorts of things whether I need on board whether I need um, uh, flash to uh, use as mainly as a, a fill flash then I will talk to the people involved as to what they're looking for or hoping to get out of the shoot and the coverage um, I try and then tell the story that um, that they want told. You know, you're, you're there to cover it for a regional newspaper. You're there to, I think anyway, to promote what's going on. I'm I'm not a news hard news photographer. I'm a social sports uh, photographer. So um, I had that discussion, and then I will watch what's going on around me, and then I'll find my spot in the light where I've got the light working for me, not against me, and I'll go to work. And then I'll try and get people to relax and get used to me being there. Then I'll wander around and shoot. That's in a social sense. When I'm at football, for example, and the, the great game of Australian rules football, I, again, having played way too much of it, um, that's, my body can attest to that, 
Um, I will get to the ground, I will assess my angles, my light, set myself up in an area where I get an unrestricted view. I'm in a vest, so that does give me that sort of access. And then I will read the game. I'll actually watch the game for a bit to get a feel for what's going going on. For If there's a dominant team, if there's dominant players, if, is the wind affecting the game? Is it wet? Is it dry? You know, all those sorts of things. And then I set about trying to create a story through the lens of the game. And that's the way I do it. How, how many uh, photos would you roughly go through in a game? In a game of football? Yeah. Um, Mind you, you're usually doing multiple games on the yeah, day. Yeah, I, gen- I start generally with the end of junior Colts. That's under 16s, I think it is. And then and I'll do netball as well. Um, so I will, I watch most, most country games where I shoot, you can, it's all in the one uh, complex. So you can see the netball court, you can see the, the football ground. So I will shoot the end of the Colts, the under 16s, then I'll move over to the netball and I'll get a bit from there. And then when the senior Colts come out on the ground, I will go back there and get a bit um, of, a, of that game early. I'll keep an eye on the netball. So when games change there, I'll go back there and grab a bit of that. Then I'll come back to the footy. Um, and then in that, there's half-time breaks, etc. So you're on the move all, all day. You're jumping back and forth. Then there'll be reserves football um, and netball still continuing. And then the A grade comes out. Now, the netball finishes in there somewhere by half time of the A grade football, netball is generally finished. So you've got to watch that. Um, so I'm coming. I'm going home, Brad, with anywhere from the day eight hundred to a thousand shots. On, Jeez, on you're doing day. well. That means that you're really targeting, um, you know, your your photos. I mean, you don't want to be home. And that's the thing, um, especially if you're doing it each weekend. It can be quite a workload. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't want to have thousands of no, photos. If no. you're doing covering all those games with that sort of amount, that's very manageable. And that's about, that's comes from watching the game, to get a feel for the game and to read the game. And can I say that netball is the hardest of all the sports I've covered to shoot. Um, basketball is also difficult because it's close and it's on a fairly small area and you get a lot of players. You take a lot of shots in basketball and netball of the back of people or the back of the umpire or what as they move between you and the and and the shot you you're, you're trying to capture so that's a bit of a problem or other players run run through and that's normal that's uh, uh, what it is um, netball's the same and netball is so fast it is they move the ball around really quickly and you are pretty close I'll often shoot netball with a, with uh, this land with the the 1750, Brad. Yep, yep. I'll shoot because 72 200 is um, on this body becomes a 100 to 300, of course. Yep, yep. So I've got a 50 35 as well, which is, which is a Pentax lens and is very good. And you can crop <clears throat> you can crop in and yep. as well and yep. that with the modern right. cameras. Yep. yep. So netball is is hard, really, really hard. You've got to be right on your game there and. Again, you've got to have the camera up. You're watch, watching through one eye what the game's doing and you're watching the other eye through the lens. And you, again, if you're trying to capture that story of the game, the emotion. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, you learn from watching, just reading the game. Football is a little easier because, oh God, from one of my coaching days in football, what is it? A 60 metre kick, the ball is in the air for something like 10 seconds. Yeah, I the, think. Field, the field, you're shooting a lot larger field yep. than yep. Net, netball. So, yep. so you, see a, you see a player kick a long ball in Aussie rules, you've got several seconds to have a look up the ground and if you see a player setting himself for a big mark, you can often see a way a player approaches the ball if you've got a, a run on it. Um, so I will often then focus on him, which and he's way off. He might be 10 metres off the, where the ball's going to land at that stage. But I'll, 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 also I'll assess that he's the one that's going to go for the mark 
and I'll focus on him and I'll stay with him. Doesn't always work. Often, you know, he can get bumped out or blocked and doesn't go for it. But generally, it's fairly right. You get a feel for who's going to do what. Um, so that's how I do it. So um, far as you'd be reasonably high on your shutter speed when you're sort of doing fast action shots, would that yeah. be correct in saying that? Yeah, look, I shoot most of it at ISO 100 or, or 200. Yep. Um, and I, I try and not get below 500th of a second Yep. if I can because you, you will get a bit of motion blur coming into it. But that, that can point. also add to the shot as well. It can. It and can that to show a little yep. bit of motion, say, in yep. the ball or yep. Yep. something like that. Yep. So, yep. Um, And I'll flick you through. I've got some shots I've taken, Brad, that I'll send through to you that you can perhaps add as stools. For yeah, well, I was, was going to actually ask you off camera, but that's yep. all right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. We're thinking the yep. same thing. Exactly. And uh, so, look, I love it. I enjoy it. Um, I should get paid to go and watch the, the football. That's the way I see it. Um, not sure I'll enjoy it. Don't, <laughs> don't, in, don't in the tell them. Rain on don't, Saturday. don't tell them those things, Grant. <laughs> well, they actually know, but look, um, we, the, we, have this, we, the Argus, um, we won an award recently. We were the best, best paper, I think, in the state, whether it was national or South Australia, but I'll say South Australia, the best regional newspaper at a certain circ circulation level in, in, in the state. And I was at a function um, where they gave their criteria as to how it was judged and you know how it was all decided. And I was quite chuffed to um, hear that photography, and, and I'm one of a few, I'm not just the only one, um, but photography was singled out for its uh, quality in the uh, new, uh, uh, newspaper as well as well, the journalism yep. and the s storytelling. So. It sort of encompasses what the newspaper's about. Yeah, right. yeah. Oh, um, uh, all aspects of a paper is um, very important. Um, yeah. The photo is there to grab your attention, to then hopefully read a very good story. So exactly. um, it's important to get it all right, as well as even just the quality. I mean, the, um, the guys who are working on um, uh, doing the colours and everything and uh, the printing of the paper is also very important. Oh, and I, and it, it's very yep. good in, yep. in the Argus. So yep. um, congratulations is, to all the people involved. Absolutely, Brad. And the guys at this function recently, the entire paper was there. All the team was there, the entire team, from all, from the journalists, the photographers, the pr production crew, um, the editor, the owners, everyone was there. And um, it's a, it is a serious team effort. It really is. And... Uh, the quality of the paper that they produce, the whole bit, is actually excellent. So, uh, yeah, it was good uh, good fun. Fantastic. All right, well, thanks for a um, bit of insight there, Grant. Um, I finally got around to asking yeah. you eventually. That, that was nice of you, Brad. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> I, got, I got the hints. <laughs> whack, whack, read this. What? What? This uh, one. <laughs> so um, so with that we'll leave that episode there sure. um, like and subscribe if you like our content and with that we'll see you in another video we shall indeed folks and vile Keith bye 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 <laughs>